one of the biggest challenge that I find working with governments and institutions worldwide is really the, the two parts that you touch. One is putting people together, uh, agreeing, mm -hmm. which is a big task. And second is making them understand technology. So, mm -hmm. which is the key element of what you're trying to do. And, and I think at the moment we are in a verge of a, a paradox that we have, as we get more advanced technology and more tools, the less people know how to use it. I'm talking from a macro perspective. Everyone spends like mm -hmm. five, 10 hours in front of devices, but the, lo the really understanding of how to use this to really create value jobs and solutions is alarming. So how do you tackle this? And I know that Texas, you have the opposites of uh, both the oil and gas energy, the as well the historical relationships, and as well now you have Tesla and a lot of different things. So you have quite a dynamic um, environment that has a lot of contradictions as well. So it's not easy probably mm -hmm. to manage what you're doing. So tell us a bit about how you tackle this. Like I think people listening to us and me myself, I'm particularly interested to know, and as well, the learnings that you have out from that. Oh, I could, I could talk for hours and hours and hours about it. But I think to your point, making sure that everyone understands the why, you know, and, and why one, why we're doing this and why we're using these particular tools to be the catalyst that solves the solves the challenges. And one thing that we hear a lot from our members is I just can't get my city council to understand why I need this funding for something they don't understand. And I don't know how to get to that point. And one example and one learning that I that I think um, a city really understood is they were asking in the budget for several million dollars to standardize all of their data systems and be able to get to the point where they can do predictive analytics. And the amount of money they weren't I don't think that particular department understood storytelling or felt very confident in how do you illustrate why that much money is necessary and what that means. Council members just said, I can't see it. This, this doesn't make sense to me. I need to fill potholes. You can have a fraction of that money, which, which didn't get anywhere near where, where that city wanted to get to. And later I was talking to one of those council members and I just said, what do you get the most angry phone calls about from your constituents? And he said, potholes, you know, and, and, um, and road conditions and them being frustrated about that. And I said, what if we had known ahead of time which projects were happening on which streets, who was going to tear up the streets, and you could coordinate that so that you're only tearing up the street once. You could predictively know when the streets were going to need repair so the potholes didn't happen. And what if that was something that, that reduced calls? And he goes, I mean, that would be incredible. I said, that's what that project would have done. It would have allowed the systems to be able to talk to each other in such a way that it makes you look better from a reelection standpoint. And he said, that, that's what that would have done. And I said, yeah, he's like, I wish I'd understood that. And so again, that speaks to how do you get those that are making the decisions to really understand what these investments mean, particularly when you can't see them. One of the challenges too of technology and smart city solutions, which I know Brandon knows very well, and certainly in our projects, we always it's always better when we can give tours because most smart city technologies you can't see with the naked eye. You're not going to notice that these sensors are in the ground or, or different things like that. What we hope is that they recognize that their quality of life has gotten better. Maybe their commute has gotten five minutes shorter, maybe because of efficiencies with traffic signals. Maybe the air quality, there's less asthma attacks if you've done a really good job at reducing emissions using technology. And so again, I think really an understanding of this technology doesn't have to be scary, but you need to know what you need to know to design them correctly. And then the storytelling aspect, um, and, and the one other thing I'll, I'll point out with all of the emerging technology, particularly AI, and I think you know everyone is aware of this, but those can be very scary technologies to residents. A lot of folks think that the, the camera systems are going to profile them, they're watching them. And so making sure that you're communicating effectively and making commitments to residents, here's how we're protecting your data, here's how we're using it, here's why it benefits you, and here's what we will never do with this data and just making sure that the community embraces those, uh, those strategies as well. I'll take a breath there. Uh, congratulations, first of all. I know that is very difficult and, and really a key element. And I, I love that you mentioned storytelling and as well education, because in the end of the day, a lot of these things is the way you tell things. 